Afternoon folks, Angelo Spandrio here again in beautiful Ojai, California. A little warm this afternoon makes you think about water. And I'm back with a very short presentation of Can the Ojai Valley Run Out of Water? I did a much more detailed presentation some time back and the link you see on your screen is for that more detailed presentation. So I would encourage you, if you want more information, to, to go there. Can the Ojai Valley run out of water? Of course it can. Will the Ojai Valley run out of water? Who knows? How close to a real water crisis were we during this last drought, this, our last five-year drought? Close. The basins were near record low levels, and Lake Casitas was at 35% of volume. We must remember that our only source of water is local rain. And when I say local rain, I mean rain in excess of 10 inches a year. Anything below 10 inches a year, we really don't contribute to storage in our groundwater basins or in Lake Casitas. Here's a little rainfall chart, and I guess uh, my camera may cover up one of the clouds, but there are four clouds on here. The top center cloud is rain that comes down over the Matillahaw Mountains, and that contributes to flow in Matillahaw Creek and eventually into the Ventura River. Ventura River flow uh, adds to the storage in the upper Ventura River groundwater basin, and if there's enough flow, we can divert water via the diversion canal from the Ventura River into Lake Casitas. Uh, we get rainfall over the southern Santa Ynez Mountains, and that contributes to flow in Coyote Creek and Santa Ana Creek, both of which run into Lake Casitas. Off to the right, we have a storm cloud over Nordoff Ridge and a storm cloud over downtown Ojai. Both of these uh, runoffs of uh, the runoff from Nordoff Ridge contributes to storage in the groundwater basin, Ojai groundwater basin, as does rainfall over Ojai. Here's a chart showing Lake Casita storage versus rainfall. And I'd like you to look at the years from, oh, about 2012 to 2016, 2011 to 2016. And you can see the rainfall in uh, Ojai is below 10 inches per year. And you can see the steady fall of storage in Lake Casitas. During that five-year drought, Lake Casitas lost 117,000 acre feet of water. And by lost, I mean it was used and a bunch went to evaporation. Nevertheless, we had a steady downward decline, even with 10 inches of rain a year. 117,000 acre feet lost in storage. Current Lake Casitas storage is 102,000 acre feet. So that means we cannot go through another five year drought. We won't have enough water. Sediment in the lake, the sediment in the lake has never been measured. The lake's been around for 50 plus years. And whatever sediment we have in the lake reduces the published lake volume. So how much sediment is there? I hope to find out very shortly. Here's a picture we took back in February showing the water running into the lake. It had a lot of water running into the lake at that time. And what it did, it, it eroded the sediment that was existing in the Santa Ana Valley, the entrance to Lake Casitas. That large red arrow shows the height of the sediment at that point. A lot of sediment. So where are we today? Well, we're still in moderate drought, as you can see on this chart, showing Santa Barbara, Ventura counties, and a couple of other areas. Here's that same chart, taking into account the rainfall we got in 2017. So we had a little bump up in storage, around 22,000 acre feet, which is about a year's worth of water. So based on that, if we have another five years of drought, we will run out of water in February of 2022, or in about four years from the first part of this year, coming year. The Ojai groundwater basin rose around 100 feet, which is a good thing. Uh, we probably have three to four years worth of water in the Ojai groundwater basin if the drought comes back. So is there hope? I'm thinking there are four things to look at. State Water Project tie-in, Matillaha Horizontal Bores, uh, nicknamed Hobos, Santa Barbara Connection, and desalination. I encourage you to go to my longer presentation to get a lot more detail on these four possibilities. Threats, here's what I perceive to be the threats to our future. Of course, no rain or rain less than 10 inches a year. 
as we talked about before. And also a threat is this deadly steelhead trout. And there's a little bit of a joke here. I hope you bear with me on that. This poor steelhead trout is not the threat really, but it's the people who are trying to encourage his survival in the Ventura River. We really have to pay attention to the regulations that people are imposing on our water for the sake of the steelhead trout. I'm not a steelhead trout ha hater, but we need to pay attention. Another thing we need to pay attention to are our very own water agencies. But we have always done it this way is what I'm afraid is going to continue unless these water agencies take new steps to manage our water in new and better ways. And the final threat I see is that we're going to keep our own heads buried in the mud and not pay attention to what's going on around us. We've got to pay attention while there's still time and time is going to run out. So what can you do? You can show up. Decisions made here will affect you and you need to be there to, to change those decisions. You need to step up, stand up, speak up. We all need to. There's an old Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is now. Well, I think we could just stick water into the same proverb. We should have been doing something about water some years ago. So now the best time to do it is now. We need to think about our water future. So as I mentioned, that's it in a nutshell. Please go to this link for a much more detailed presentation. And thank you very much.